Hello, everybody! It is Friday! How you doing tonight, everybody? Tell me about your Friday. You are at the end, at the end of another week. Week 36 or 37, depending on your count. Angie's number one tonight, number one spot. Hello, Nebraska Angie. How are you? I hope all is well with you in Nebraska. Hope you had a good margarita the other night. Thinking of you. I do hope all is well, my friend. I do, I do. Ah. Tell me about your Friday. It is Friday, and I am excited to have you all here. Pat in the Peanut Gallery. I hope all is well with you and Dick Pat. Good to have you here live. Great to have you here on this Friday. Yes, you, you, you did it. Week 35, 36, 37. Boom, in the books, in the books, you guys did it. Spent the day with Mama Tess and had a beer. That's awesome. Love it. Love it. And Mama Tess probably had the whiskey. Two bourbon, one bourbon, one shot, one beer, I don't know. Uh, isn't that the way it goes? Actually, that's my friend's cousin that sings that. Um, not just because he's at the bar, but that's his song. Um, that's awesome, Angie. I'm glad you had time with Mama Tess today. This time is so important, and I'm glad you were able to enjoy it. Actually, you know, so I'm, I'm thrilled for that. So, Kim, happy Friday. Week 36, 37, Kim, you, you did it. Yes, you made it, you're making it across the finish line. We are at the end here. We are at the end. It's Friday, Rose. I'm here to tell you. I'm here to let you know. I'm here to check in and let you know it's Friday. Congratulations, Pat. Yay! You're one of a couple small loans that, uh, that, that have gotten it. I mean, and what I mean by small loans, I'm, I'm talking the under a uh, couple million dollar loans. Um, because most people are waiting and, uh, I am in that bucket as well, even though I have the paperwork sitting on my desk. So, um, but you know, I mean, uh, you know, there's still a lot of interesting stuff between now and the 18th of December going on with our friends in Congress and, and we'll see. It certainly, uh, if it doesn't happen, then it's not going to happen, uh, anytime soon is sort of um, my viewpoint on it. Angela, great to have you here. Welcome to the program this Friday night as we celebrate Friday, Friday. That's as much singing as you're getting out of me tonight. It's Friday. Uh, what are we grateful for tonight? I know Pat is grateful for forgiveness. I am saying more than what you've read. What I am saying is I'm saying in general, continue to wait. Okay, because I expect it to get simpler. There's two issues with it, and I'll cover both tonight. So let's get things going. But tell me what you're grateful for, and then I'll get things going, and I'll come back to your question, Rose. Happy Pink Friday. Yes, Angela. Jennifer's with us tonight live. Hope the play was great last night, Jennifer. Or as good as any school play could be. Up here, it was a school play and then friendlies. Then you got friendlies for ice cream. So I don't know what you do down in Florida uh, after a school play, especially where you have the whole baking cabinet of the world um, in your kitchen. So I don't know that anybody would want to go out for dessert afterwards. But uh, a good sales day. Hey, Angela, that's awesome. A good sales day is... 
is a great way to kick off the weekend. We had a decent sales day today, too. I was, uh, eh, you know, it's like they remembered to turn on the open sign today. Yesterday, not so much, but today they remembered to turn it on. Oh, it was nonsense. That's great. That is hilarious. And the kids doing it. Well, depending on what the age of the kids are, that's... Don't you, aren't you all at a church school doing nonsense? Maybe, uh, maybe it's the Jewish guy that's doing it wrong. Aren't you at a, at a uh, religious school? Maybe it wasn't there. The pink tent really helped. I love it, Angela. Kitty's here. Oh, it's great to have you all here. Hey, Kitty. Welcome to Friday. You did it. This is the tail end of week 36, 37, week 36, 37, and you have done it. You all have. You're awesome, people. Awesome. Awesome. Well, let's get this party started. Let's get this party started. Okay, so Christian school doing nonsense. Okay, uh, you know, I love it. I love it. You, usually, most Christian schools would avoid that, okay? Most Christian schools would avoid that. But, you know, I always got myself in trouble in Hebrew school, so, you know, well, I got myself in trouble in regular school, too, so. Uh, awesome, Kim, doing double in sales in the last hour. Hey, Kitty, it's all good. Cheers to you. Cheers to the mountains. Um, that's, uh, that's awesome, Kim. We had a customer bring us wine today. Bring our staff wine. Okay? Wine they brought our staff. A few weeks ago he brought them chicken soup, and today he brings them red wine. I, you know... I... Uh, what did I do? I went over there to get my glasses, and then I don't think I picked them up. Okay, I've got my glasses now. I'm walking back. I'm back on set. Well, let's get this party started this Friday night because I haven't had dinner yet. So we are on. It, we start this program every night with the Good Morning, Good Night book. The Good Morning, Good Night book is how we get started. Tonight we are on page 178, 178. Good morning. Give a little more than you think you can today. It'll come back around somehow, I promise. Boy, I've done that. That's what I got for you. That is your good morning. I have given a little more than I thought I could today. That is, uh, that is true. So, uh, wine is always welcome. We even have, we have a, uh, a regular customer. Oh, whoa. Leaf in my water. Set leaf and it landed in my water. Um, that's a problem. Yeah, your set leaf? My set leaf needs to go. It was in my water. Do you need new water? Well, maybe we should refresh my water. Thank you. Thank you, assistant. Um, that, that was fresh set leaf from the driveway. Welcome to New England. Um, so, um, where was I going here? It's Friday. It's all good. Wine is, oh, oh, we have a customer. We have a customer who has brought us, um, sparkling cider because they didn't know if we'd be offended if they brought us wine or champagne. They own a freaking liquor store. I'm not offended. Bring us whatever. Okay. And she's the nicest lady. They're really nice people. Janet's her name, um, and I'm not even making that up. Okay, my peanut gallery says I'm making that up, but I'm not. Um, but wine is always welcome. I had the lady that brought us margaritas in a can, okay, and she would sneak it in. She would be very stealthy about it in her purse. So, but our customers are great. What was I doing? It's your question of the day every day. I love it, Kitty. 
Um, well, let me go back to Rose's question. So now that we're now that we're in program, hang on a second. Rose is cooking brownies in the oven. All right. Well, we're supposed to have Jennifer's recipe for tomorrow. Um, and, uh, and if not, hey, Karen's with us from all the way from Canada, across the border. Welcome, Karen. Um, yes, we're supposed to have Julie's brownie recipe for tomorrow. I talked to her recently. I feel like it was last night. But, uh, and uh, we're supposed to have that. But you know what? Oh, I need a prop. Can I have one of the, um, can you burn a cup? Um, you know what, speaking of food, is back in stock. And I, and I already uh, leaked it to Kitty and Jennifer. Peanut butter cups, okay? I mean, we have like a dozen flavors are back in stock. Freshly shipped, direct, uh, um, uh, freshly in stock. So we've, and we even have the new flavors, like this is one of them, marshmallow, marshmallow, and PB and J peanut butter cups. They're on our website from our friends at CB Stuffer. These peanut butter cups are awesome and make a great gift, and they just make a great snack. If you think brownies are good. Cutting into a peanut butter cup is pretty freaking awesome, I'm just saying. Um, okay, so Rose's question. Uh, hey, Heidi, from the Daisy is in-house. Shoes and boots are 20% off this weekend at the Daisy. I got my email, I know. Good to have you here, Heidi. It's Friday, and you made it through another week. Week 36 or 37, you did it. You're awesome. 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 And I even have the special right, don't I? I have the special right. Um, okay, so... And I am te still recommending people wait on applying for PPP forgiveness. Just to save yourself the aggravation. Not that you're not going to get it or anything, but I'm expecting it to be further streamlined. Okay, so you don't have to worry about any pressure from the bank or anything else. You have 10 months from the end of the covered period to apply. Okay, before you have to make a payment. You actually have longer than that to apply. Hey, Sarah, we got a whole Nebraska contingent here now. Okay, well, you want me? I have one. Heidi, I love you, okay? I really do love you, but I have one critique of your email, okay? I had shoes and boots on sale, and you had all this other winter scenes in your email. No shoes, no boots, okay? Um, and Carrie snuck in here. Great to have you with us. Um, so at this point, I'm recommending, okay, unless your loan is larger than 150 and really closer to 2 million, okay, a million or more anyways, okay, which I have worked with people that have that, nobody that's, at, that's in our live group. But, okay, in that instance, yes, go ahead and apply and get all your ducks in a row. Or if you have a loan covenant, okay, so if you have another loan, that requires you to have any loans that are on your balance sheet cleared off by the end of the year, then it's a reason to get it done because technically the PPP is a loan. Okay, but at this point, I'm still expecting our friends in Congress with their back up against the wall to do the right thing here before the end of the year. I know that looks really, really bleak right now. I real, I'm a realistic person. I'm an optimist, but I'm realistic. I'm a realistic optimist. I'm an RO. I have RO. Realistic optimism. Okay? And I know that doesn't look realistic right now. But I am hopeful after we get through the main budget battle that the, that they want to leave a good sense of what they did for small business. Okay, that this administration, that, that the people that are there, 
that Jovita at the SBA, that Stevie, okay, at Treasury, that all these people really want to do the right thing by businesses in this country. And that'll be streamlined forgiveness and fixing of the tax issue with the PPP. So I am optimistic on both. We have really till December 18th, okay? December 18th is the deadline on that. That's when Congress calls it quits for the year. Um, so we'll see. You know, so my answer to you may change between now and the middle of December, okay? Based on what our friends in Congress are doing, Rose, and everyone else, but Rose brought up the question. Um, but you're still, no matter what, you're still going to have to have your paperwork ducks in a row. And I do. I, they're sitting up on my desk. I, I touched the folder today that has it all in it um, as I was uh, organizing and working my desk. So um, just keep that in mind, and I will keep you posted on it, okay? And I will absolutely keep you posted on it because there are a couple developments I will have for you this weekend on it. Uh, They have more days off than Carter's have pills. <laughs> yes, they do, okay? I mean, I, I, I do not get the congressional calendar. I mean, if you actually look at the congressional calendar, they have most Fridays off. They, they have, I mean, it's ridiculous, the congressional calendar. I, maybe I would understand it if I was in Congress. I, 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 I wouldn't do well with all the fundraising side of Congress that you have to spend all, the, all your time pandering for money and begging for money. I don't do that well. Okay, that side of it I don't do well. I could do the actual job of being in Congress, being a congressman or a senator. I could do that job. I couldn't do the job of uh, shaking people. I can shake people down for money, don't get me wrong, but I couldn't do that I have to constantly be fundraising. Sarah, you will have, the idol is, you will have to pay back the idol, and you will have to pay back the idol advance. The idol advance, if you got an idol advance, you will have to pay that back when you, when your PPP is forgiven, okay? The idol is a loan no matter what. So the idol is a loan no matter what. That is not going to change. Congress is not going to change that. In a, in a Biden administration, in a Trump administration, in a, anybody's administration, the idol is a loan. But the idle advance is a grant unless you got a PPP. If you got a PPP, you will owe the money for the idle advance at the, uh, when your PPP is forgiven. It is specifically right in there. It's right in the forgiveness. And even if they streamline forgiveness, that will still be the case. So keep in mind, and it is always, okay, yeah, you're going to owe that when, you're, when your PPP is forgiven, regardless of how, whether it's forgiven by, uh, via streamlined or it's forgiven via the form, you will, the bank will come back and say, okay, you owe whatever the advance is. Technically, technically, you can keep that part as a loan for the term of the PPP. I do not recommend that. This is bad government paperwork. Bad, bad government paperwork. I recommend that you write the check as they say, yep, your loan is forgiven, you only own the idle advance amount, that you on that day write the check for it. And so that is my, that has been my recommendation all along, that you got several months of free, of free use of the extra money but um, that you pay it at that time so it closes out the whole PPP. You just want to be done with it, okay? And especially if we get the option for a second one, which is still up in the air, you want to have that, the ability to close that out and say, yep, I'm a good retailer, I'm a good uh, person, and I, want, I deserve another PPP. But again, the next 30 days is critical. And why is it critical? Okay. So let me talk about that for a little bit because I said I would the other night and I didn't get to it. 
So, you know, there's talk of stimulus, there's talk, well, if with Biden in the White House, then obviously Nancy Pelosi's uh, hero and Chuck Schumer's bill, the HEROES Act, um, that they've called it, and the $2 trillion or $3 trillion stimulus will happen, and um, all that's going to happen under a Biden administration. What's really happening in the back rooms, okay, so, I mean, it's a real balance, and, I've, I, and I continue to learn so much, okay, as, I, as I've become a more, progressive is not the right word, as I've become a more staunch advocate, I don't know what the right word is, but I've become a bigger adv advocate. Distra as I become distracted by the wealthies, as I become distracted by the wealthies, cheers to the wealthies, as I've become distracted by the wealthies, what I've learned with, with government, and this is what I'm sharing with you, is it's more complex. That's the news cycle, and we really need to turn off the news cycle, okay, is that Biden, Pelosi, Schumer will pass this multi-trillion dollar, whether they get the Senate or don't get the Senate, and none of that's going to happen, and here's why, okay? So Biden has said, okay, and, and had meetings with people on both sides. And I, I've met with Biden's guy, not his economic guy during the campaign. I met with him a few weeks before the election. Uh, I met with Trump's people too, but I, I did, you know, when you're an advocate, you meet with anybody because you just want to have a seat at the table. It doesn't matter who's in charge because there's always change. So what... The reality is of a new president, okay, is he's going to have to deal with the virus. So, so what Biden is advocating is that Nancy and Chuck come to the table and come to an agreement with Mitch, regardless of the amount, get some stimulus out there in the economy. And um, President-elect Biden, and I told you he prefers President-elect to Vice President Biden, okay, President-elect Biden wants that to happen regardless of the amount. He wants to get some stimulus out, you know, you know, so he wants more than Mitch's 500 billion. You know, he knows it's going to be less than Nancy and Chuck's two to three trillion. You know, whatever it ends out at that's north of 500 billion, he's sort of okay with because it's getting something out there in the economy. Okay, and this is what's being said by him in the back room. Okay. And he's saying that, okay, because the reality is when he takes office in January, there are two priorities, okay? There are two priorities in January when he takes office. Distribution and logistics around a vaccine while also dealing with the pandemic. So vaccine and pandemic are hand in hand. That's really all one issue, okay? And two, getting his cabinet and his people confirmed by the Senate, which in a general sense is a pro forma thing, because even in this very divided government and where people are very extremely partisan, okay, there's the general belief in the Senate that the president should get his picks. Yes, we can pick on one or two people, out of all his nominees, but we should generally let him have the people that he wants and then hold him accountable for it and blame him for everything later on. And so, but that's going to suck both those issues by themselves are going to suck all the air out of the room, okay? And there's going to be no room for talk of negotiating a stimulus bill. So Joe would much rather, much rather get any kind of stimulus out while Trump is still in office, even if Trump takes credit for it, okay? And while the current Congress is there, even if Mitch McConnell takes credit for it, okay? He has said this, again, not in the news, but in other meetings. And so, uh, and I hold him to his word, okay? I, I hold Joe... Uh, President-elect Biden to his word on that. And I personally believe that, quite honestly, these guys should all put their differences aside and agree on what they agree on, 
okay? So they don't agree on the total amount, but let's get something out there. They agree on the general framework that we need to throw money at these things. We need to give money to businesses. We need to put money to virus. We need to give some money to the states. They don't agree on the total amount, but get, get it started. Prime the pump, and if you have to go back, go back, okay? So if, if three quarters of a trillion will get, get us started, Great, let's get those engines started. Let's prime the pump. Um, so, you know, that's what I'm talking to people about. That is what I am advocating for and I am hopeful for. Um, and I hope that Congress doesn't get distracted by the wealthies. That is what I am hopeful for. I mean, they can uh, watch Keeping Up with the Wealthies later on. I mean, it's a great show. It's a great show. I saw in the current episode, the kids are coming home for Thanksgiving. Great, it's gonna be a great episode next week, okay? But Congress can catch up on that after, on their winter recess, I'm just saying. They can, they can watch, bas they can stream live episodes of Keeping Up With The Welties later on. I have heard they have an eye, the Welties have an eye on the Kardashian set and boat because there has to be a boat with it for the wealthies to move. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, that, that is the issue. That is the back door of what's happening as we transition between leaders. And to an extent, it's a bunch of BS. And to an extent, we're mired in partisanship and we're mired in, I have to get everything I want. And it, that side of it really pisses me off because that's not the way I operate, okay? And part of it is my, I can see both sides of all of this. The season finale of Keeping Up With The Wealthies is going to be off the hook. I love it. I love it. Ah. Um, I, I'm really troubled by that we're almost out of seasonal dip at for Costco seasonal dip. The what is that called? The seasonal dip? Buffalo, Buffalo chicken seasonal dip. <laughs> Kim is oh Kim. You would love the wealthies. They're awesome. They're awesome. You know? The things you find in Indiana. I've heard Mike Pence is gonna come work for them and hang out. Uh, he's a huge fan. Uh, but, um, yes, I get it, you know, but you got to keep in mind that I, that more than anything, my optimism keeps me at the table. My knowing that it's more important to have a voice at the table is, is more important than telling these people off that they're being stupid. Although some of them tune in, I think. I think they have their staff watch this to see if I called them bad names. Um, and, uh, you know, it is, uh, the, there are businesses hurting. There are, I mean, I, I have been in more conversations lately um, with different people and different businesses, but we're going to get everybody through. If you, again, I am still a firm believer. If you were not going out of business before COVID, we are not hanging a going out of business sign on your business now, regardless of what kind of business you are. <laughs> yes, a future episode of shit. I got to get back into Shit's Creek. We watched some of it and, uh, you know, we got to get back to that a little bit. Uh, there's actually a town not far from where I grew up in, in upstate New York, that a lot that they say Schitt's Creek is based on. That has become a huge tourist attraction. It's not far from where I actually grew up in the whole scheme of things. Um, although I am not making my Thanksgiving pilgrimage to that area um, this year. You, normally, I would be doing that trip. Uh, to check in on my brother and other things there, and this year I will not be doing that uh, next week. Um, but uh, there will be other times for us to get together. We're keeping everybody healthy so that we can get together in the future, and that's what it's all about, people. They are disheartening and unproductive 
Kim, but you have to keep the, it, it, you know, what I've learned more than anything is you just got to keep on beating the drum. You got to keep on beating the drum and being part of the conversation. Um, I learned that several years ago. I mean, I, I, my advocacy has obviously stepped up during this, but I, I learned that a while back and, um, you know, we need to continue it. We need to, we need to do it. We need people that can tell the story. And I'll, and I'll get into it this weekend some as I tell you my story of my conversation with the Massachusetts Treasury. Um, because that's really interesting and it mirrors what's happening in a lot of other states. Um, but the biggest thing, again, is, is vote with your wallet. Um, spend money at small businesses this holiday season. Big or small, you know, the, the small businesses, you know, any purchase matters. Every purchase matters. It's part of andying your community as you spend your dollars in small businesses. Whether you get takeout or you um, get a gift um, somewhere, you know, the more you spend, you know, all these businesses are incredibly small. Um, even with every online order we get, you know, um, we're incredibly grateful how that helps keep us uh, going. So, you know, I mean, I remind people because some people think we're this huge, massive company when they buy from us online. I mean, I, I actually had a bottom line somebody one day and I'm like, uh, that, you know, I, I love that the internet makes us look bigger than we are. I mean, the internet can make us look like this massive company, okay, versus the, you know, 18 souls that that order is keeping employed. The, the 18 souls that that's keeping employed um, are incredibly grateful for it. And it's hard, but, it, but we are incredibly grateful. And there's an, a Pacific Trail size 5'6 boys winter coat just flashed on my screen as sold as uh, I was saying that. And I am thankful for that. Every purchase, every sale, I am grateful for, um, truly honored for. So we'll cover that more this weekend. I'll, I'll update you on the treasury. I've got some other stuff. I got my conversation with uh, the retail doctor to update you guys on. We've got a lot of stuff. I mean, I've got a lot of content. Uh, you know, I, I almost have more of my upcoming shows pre-written than the Keeping Up With The Wealthy show, okay? I mean, I can't believe they got the spot of Keeping Up With The Kardashians, but they got it. Um, and uh, Jennifer, Kurt, and I mean, it's really run by the whole, Camilla runs the whole show. I mean, I'm just saying, Camilla runs the whole show. That's awesome, Kitty. I love that. I heart that. Can I make a heart? I, I'm, not, I'm not inclined. I can't do the heart thing, Kitty. I did that. Yeah, pretty close. I, my, my peanut gallery said I'm pretty close. That's awesome, Kitty. Um, even though people are being told to stay home right now in Kitty's area, Rochester, Illinois, um... What did she do? Kitty's got people coming in. People are staying home, but people that are coming out to shop with her. And, and, you know, she's doing nothing more than being what she's been for 20-something years in business. Uh, um, and being a good, responsible, socially responsible citizen, keeping her store clean, keeping her employees safe, and running a great store while drinking the Blue Mountains at night, and um, and she likes dark chocolate. I'm just saying, Jennifer. Ah, I love it. I can get a, I can get Dazzle going, and now I can get Camilla going. All right, Camilla. <laughs> Woo. Um. Does this have any weird fascination with Charles and the Queen? Is what my peanut gallery wants to know. Okay, Charles and the future queen, Camilla, uh, or the woman who wants to be queen. There, there's some curiosity here. I guess we'll have to watch back episodes and get you streaming. 
you know, this video, this video, and everything that I talk about, even keeping up with the wealthies, okay, goes over to nerds.org slash resale strong by noon the very next day. Noon the very next day. All the files, everything. It's there to keep you organized when you can't tune in live because sometimes you just got to catch the replay. Sometimes you just want to watch it again. You're like, that train wreck that Neil is, I got to see that again. <laughs> um, it's all over there. The link to the YouTube channel. You're not alone running this store. You're not. You're not alone. You can like, comment, subscribe. You can even click the bell and be notified when a new one drops. Uh, oh, my gosh. I am here live in the Nards private Facebook group every night at more 8 than ish. More 8 than ish. Eastern, every night, live in the Nards private Facebook group is where you can find me. If you have a question in between, you know what to do. You just email me. Neil, N-E-I-L at ECISTORS.com. N-E-I-L at ECISTORS.com is where you find me. Uh, that is where it's all at. Um, we start this program every night, every night with the good morning, good night book. The good morning, good night book is how we start this program. Oh, that's upside down. See how confusing the wealthies got me? The good morning, good night book right there. Tonight, if you were not here at the top of the program, we are on page 178. Good morning. Give a little more than you think you can today. It'll come back around somehow. I promise. That's what I got for you. Our good night tonight is good night. New ideas are waiting for you on the other side of sleep. Don't be afraid of going to meet them. Yeah? Yeah! Boom! There is your graphics, people. Ladies and gentlemen, I am Neil Abramson. I do like a good party, a wedding, a bar mitzvah, possibly even an inauguration. I checked the mailbox. It didn't come today. No invite. You never know. Stranger things have happened. I will be back here tomorrow at more 8 than ish with self-care Sunday preview. The recipe of the week. We finish week 36, 37 tomorrow. Week 36, 37 will be over and in the books. And I'll be back here with you at more 8 than ish. Until then, know that you and you and even you, Camilla, yes, you, you're not alone running this store. Have a great night, everybody. It's time for dinner. <laughs>